Hello? Yes, your girl is incoming fourth year. So that means that I finished third year. Malama. Yay! <laughs> so I noticed that the higher the level, the less anxious students become. So very evident just of views ng mga videos ko. But that's okay. So please do subscribe, like this video, and comment your thoughts. Without further ado, let's go. Biopharmaceutics and Pharmacokinetics. So in this subject, wag kang papetics petics. At first, it will be easy like concepts lang ng pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic. And then, hello graphs, hello computation. So mahirap na siya sa bandang dulo. My tip will be try answering pakop reviewers in the internet. Practice lang and then pray na magaling yung professor and mabait yung professor na mapunta sa inyo. Kasi mahirap talaga yung subject na to. I, first, I thought it was easy pero hindi pa. Pharmacology 2. So, they are like sister ng biopharmaceutics. So, it will be a great tip to study both while you are reviewing. Kasi coincide yung mga concepts and topics nila. So, you need to visit your notes mo sa biopharmaceutics while reviewing pharmacology and vice versa. Pharmacology, of course, puro gamot, mechanism of action, etc. The key here is memorization. Right now, due to the pandemic, actually, I shifted from puro notes, handwritten notes, to digital notes na. So, if you're like me, try summarizing your notes, pero handwritten, so that it will be easier to understand. And, uh, hindi siya masyadong masakit sa mata, because it's handwritten. I'll show you some examples. As always, all the references will be linked in a G drive below in the description box. I'm sorry if I cannot give you. Marami nag uh, re reach out sa akin to give some notes, but I'm sorry but that I cannot give it to you. One is that, um, as I said, directly ako sa PowerPoint naglalagay ng notes, and I am not allowed to give it to the public because it's copyright of the school. Dispensing two. So, dispensing is kind of chill. In dispensing one, you will learn by the book kasi. Then, some practice or simulation. But in dispensing two, I remember we were tasked to... We were tasked to talk to real patients. So, yung case niya is also real. And it was a challenge since online kasi pandemic. But I realized na pag real patient siya, even how hard you try to follow the steps in proper counseling and documentation, mahirap talaga siya. You have to practice extracting information sa patient mo para you will able to attend to their needs. Then, puro activities na and lab manuals. Next is clinical pharmacy and pharmacotherapeutics 1 and 2. Pagsamahin na natin. Clean Farm 1 is easy. Wow. Pero legit. Compare sa kapatid niya na Clean Farm 2, mas mahirap si Clean Farm 2. Sa Clean Farm 1, very basic lang siya, like, like introduction sa patient counseling, pharmacy care plan, basic lectures, etc. Pero pagdating mo ng Clinical Pharmacy 2, all diseases i-discuss sa inyo. And kailangan siya i-compress in one semester. My professor told us na clean, Clinical Pharmacy is really easy kung one year mo siya papag-aralan. Pero kasi kinompress siya sa like about 2 to 3 months and uh, mahirap siya kasi sobrang bulky niya. Basically, clinical pharmacy is the summary or the application of everything you learned in pharmacy so far. Kasi yung order niya is like physiology, pathophysiology, clinical manifestations, diagnosis and testing, then review of medications. So technically, meron dong anatomy and then pharmacology. But in terms of those things, hindi naman siya very deep. Kailangan mo lang malaman yung mga basics and then what are the guidelines in terms of the medication. Mahirap siya. You will encounter a lot of cases. Bibigyan kayo ng cases, especially in the exams. Hindi siya yung um, normal identification type. Puro cases talaga siya. They try to make the exam like the board exam. Yung Morse, Morse code ba yung tawag yan? Yung may 1, 2, 3, then A, B, C, 1, 2, 3. Basta yung talay-talay yung mga choices. Again, it will be very hard, so seryosohin ninyo. They say that in clinical pharmacy, doon mo talaga malalaman or doon mo ma-feel yung essence of being a pharmacist. Hospital pharmacy. 
it is more focused on the practice of pharmacists in a hospital setting itself more of administration stuff, proper procurement, distribution, new setting no mismo pharmacy sa hospital, ganon. Hindi masyado sa drugs, though meron din like mga intravenous, but again, hindi masyado. This subject was okay. Pharmaceutical manufacturing with uh, QA and CGMP. This one is a sister of DDS. Hindi yung Duterte, <laughs> pero yung drug delivery system na subject back in Second year, I guess. Second year and first year. Parang mao ulit yung mga topics, pero more detailed and more on manufacturing side. So you will tackle topics like the equipment, excipients of different medicines, and the current good manufacturing practices. Too bad, really too bad na online kami because there are laboratories dito na exciting sa hanap, but we are not able to experience those things. Buti na lang, we actually experienced some sa EDS subjects namin dati. Drug discovery and development. This one is very interesting for me because you will learn how a, a drug is being discovered and being developed. Dati, really before, more of accidental ang mga discoveries, but today, really systematic na sila because we have a lot of researchers na. In here, you will know yung mga series of steps and uh, filters, multiple filters that a certain compound, a lead compound, need to undergo before being tested sa animals mismo pa. Di ba? Animals than human. So, napakarami pang nangyayari before pa siya matest sa animals and even before matest sa human. So, here, I, I develop appreciation and trust more in the medicines in the market kasi makikita mo kung gaano ka tedious and how many hundreds of experts look in a single compound just to make it um, safe and effective. Pharmaceutical toxicology. We know that a medicine is a double-edged sword, right? If it has benefits, it, there are always risks of harm. That's why there are pharmacists. In pharmaceutical toxicology, you will focus more on, on knowing and identifying the symptoms ng toxicity of various compounds and other household medicines. You will be like a forensics. It is cool. Puro memorization dito, but don't worry. There are mnemonics na very helpful. And I hope i bigay rin sa inyo ng prof nyo yun because it's really helpful. Marketing research. I don't know if other schools have this marketing research, pero kasi kami, since ladderized, sa third year, we need to graduate or have certificate ng Bachelors of Pharmaceutical Marketing. So, we need this subject. Basically, this subject is marketing, but focus on pharmaceutical companies and how you will market medicines because it's different. Kasi you will have a market research dito. So, it's like a thesis, but more of just a survey. Hindi siya yung thesis na thesis. This is amazing. I enjoyed it. My PDF dito, so I'll put down in the description below. Health technology assessment and health policy with pharmacoeconomics. So, we were told that this subject is new sa curriculum. So, I don't know if you have this one. Dati daw kasi puro or pure pharmacoeconomics lang siya, but in our curriculum, ni narrow down siya into HTA or Health Technology Assessment. But as said in the subject, meron din siyang pharmacoeconomics like cost-benefit analysis, etc. HTA itself is kind of new in the Philippines. Um, it is there to strengthen yung UHC or Universal Healthcare Coverage na batas RA-1223. They are very significant, especially today in the pandemic, kasi yung HTAC or Health Technology Assessment Council Sila yung nag advice sa DOH and make policies in terms of prioritization for COVID and maximizing yung mga resources natin. This subject is really more of introduction sa HTA. You do not have to worry about this subject too much. Social and Administrative Pharmacy. So in this subject, we were taught how to be a good leader, a better pharmacist who understand how social and environment affects the patient itself and our pro it taught us how to engage in community health related problems so here uh, we focus more on the covid uh, vaccine awareness so meron kami mga programs na ginawa to accomplish this particular subject legal pharmacy and ethics with regulatory pharmacy laws batas republic act presidential decree 
etc. Name it. Memorization is the key here because you will tackle all the laws inside or governing the practice of pharmacy and even outside of it that are related to health. My tip will be focus on the our core law, Republic Act 10918, and also your sister niya. Na 5921. Second is go to the law itself. Yung professor nyo kasi will not tackle everything from the start to finish ng isang law because it will take a while. So medyo more of yung important lang ita tackle niya and application, discussion, ganyan. But magugulat ka sa exam, meron ka may kita mga penalties kapag ganitin ginawa mo ano mga penalties na ano. And it's different in every law. So medyo mabigat siya. And even a simple definition na nasa law and yung mismong title ng law, nilalagay nila. Expect also sa exam na yung application ng law, yung nandun, hindi siya very identification type or direct to the point type. Cosmetic Product Development, Cosmetic Product Development Regulation and Safety Assessment. Too bad again, we were not able to experience yung laboratory dito. Kasi yun talaga yung pinaka-core ng subject na to sana. But we're theories lang kami. Yung laws and regulation regarding cosmetic, history, how pharmacy will take part sa cosmetic um, regulation and production, etc. Ganun. Cosmetic um, development is okay. And our last major subject is public health. Since pharmacists has roles in the community, you need to learn about public health. Topics um, like introductions of public health, specifically in the Philippines, roles ng pharmacists sa public health. But right now, para nag-focus kami sa COVID. Kasi nga, yung situation ngayon, what are our roles as pharmacists? sa COVID situation natin ngayon. This one is okay kasi may computation part sa dulo. So, medyo naging challenging doon. But technically, yung buong subject is more of concept lang. So, understanding is the key. My tip is go to CDC epidemiology lessons. Minsan kasi doon kumukuha yung professors ng mga self-assessment or quizzes. I will link that in the description below. And, ayun, punta lang kayo sa internet to practice some questions kasi more of application yung Um, nilalagay dito. For example, they will give a certain uh, situation that will, and then they will ask if it, if is it cohort study, if it, it's cross sectional, ganon. So that will be all for this vlog. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down.